And what I did was ask for remedy on what happened to my boat. I left uh, the senator's office feeling like, well, I guess my boat didn't count. Welcome to the 100 Year Lifestyle Podcast, dedicated to you and your loved ones living at 100% for 100 years and beyond. I'm your host, Dr. Eric Plasker. Welcome everybody to the 100 Year Lifestyle Podcast where we are transforming health and longevity worldwide so that you and your loved ones can live, truly live at 100% for 100 years and beyond. And we have an interesting conversation that we're gonna have today. It's an important conversation that is relevant to what's going on in the world. Uh, I'm gonna introduce you to a woman who's If this happened to you, what I'm going to describe to you, what she's going to describe to you, if this happened to you, my guess is that you would be mad. It would give you a sense of purpose. And we're going to meet a woman who went, stood online for three hours to vote, got up to vote, and they told her that she had already voted and she had not already voted. And she is not alone. There are others like this. I'm not going to tell you anything else about it. But here she is. I want you to listen to my entire conversation with a very courageous woman. Please meet Ursula Wolf. Here's the interview right now. Thanks for being here with us. Hey, everybody. Dr. Eric Plasker here with a new acquaintance, a meaningful story to tell you about uh, this woman. You're going to hear it from her. I heard it from her. Her name is Ursula Wolf. Ursula, welcome to our conversation today. Thank you for taking the time to have this discussion. Thank you very much for inviting me to be a part of this discussion. Well, it's an important discussion. So Ursula and I were at a similar meeting, the same meeting about a week ago, and uh, she stood up and told her story. I'm not going to tell it. I'm going to let her tell it. We were talking about the election, the 2020 election, and what she said, my jaw dropped, actually, when I heard her tell this, So Ursula, why don't you tell everybody what happened when you went to vote for the 2020 election? Uh, When I went to uh, vote on the 2020 election, I did early voting uh, on October 13th at the um, Alpharetta Library. Um, There were very long lines. While we waited, there was uh, one of the poll workers assistants came out and apologized for the really long wait because There were only a couple of the poll packs were working. Finally, I got to get ready to vote. Uh, I presented my uh, driver's license to the poll worker. Um, He took my driver's license and he scanned it through the poll pad and he he looked up at me and said, ma'am, you already voted. And I just said, excuse me, what, what do you mean I've already voted? I said, I didn't just wait three hours in line to, because I've already voted. So he um, was, oh, well, I'm sorry. There was, then he proceeded to ask me if I had requested an absentee ballot. And I told him, no, I did not. At which time he tried to make some entries into the uh, poll pad. And he was not successful. He indicated, sorry, our our internet's not working. Um, The system has been really slow. Let me see what I can do. And he pulled out his computer. And in his computer, I see he was entering uh, my information. And he said that he was going to uh, handle my vote manually. He proceeded to give me a vote card but it was a open vote card because it did not have, it had not been linked to my name via the poll pad using my driver's license. So I, I don't know what the process would have been to, from his note or his entry into his computer, me going with an open card to the system, I did ask him, can you tell me what happened? Can you tell me the reason why you show on your system that I've already voted? He told me he could not. Wow. And so how did you feel when he told you that? I mean, I could, I cannot even imagine if I had waited online for three hours or one minute and I had not voted and somebody told me that I already voted and I knew I didn't vote, 
I don't know that I could have contained myself. How did you feel and how did you react? Well, I was very annoyed. I was, uh, I was trying not to let the, my anger get the better of me because the person, the young man in front of me, I, I didn't see that I was going to gain anything by losing my temper with this young man. But he did indicate to me that as far as he could tell that he was going to record my vote manually, make sure that it counted. But I'm a poll worker. And as I understand the system, I just didn't see how my boat was going to get eventually tied to my name. And um, apparently there was a process that they needed to follow in order to cancel my absentee ballot request in order for the my vote to count. So, so there was an absentee ballot that was requested, even though you did not request it. Correct. Okay. And that's how the vote was submitted under your name. I presume that that's how it was because I certainly had not voted. I certainly did not submit an absentee ballot, voted by absentee ballot. I certainly didn't do that. So somebody did. So this poll worker attempted to do something that you don't know whether it worked or not. What did you do from there? I did contact my, uh, my Senator. I did submit, I did call and submit the information to the, um, to the hotline, you know, the, the discrepancy hotline that had been set up and I told what was happened. And, um, there was no, I never, someone would tell me, uh, we're going to give you a call. And then at some point I received, uh, an email from, someone telling us, telling us, hey, if you have any discrepancies or you witnessed anything, put it in an affidavit and submit it, which, which I did. I put it in an affidavit. I had it notarized in the whole thing. And I submitted that to the uh, uh, Sidney Powell team. Uh, I did hear eventually from, from one of the team people over the phone uh, wanted to verify that uh, the information just confirmed what I had put on that affidavit. And then he just said, well, we might, we may get in touch with you. The next step that I took to try and um, was to, to find out what happened is I contacted the board of elections member for Fulton County that is represents my district. And he indicated to me that sometimes there are mistakes and that, you know, it's been a quite a chaotic situation, that the changes that as they happened because of all the COVID thing had complicated things, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. But he told me, if you go to my voter page and you see that your um that your vote has been accepted, then that's it. Then your vote, your vote's in. And I, I kept saying, but that doesn't explain to me why I was told that I had already voted. How do I know which vote is the one that counted? So on your page that you went to, did you see that you voted? And did was it was there a way to see that whether or not it was the accurate vote that you actually cast? There is not. The only thing that my voter page um, indicates is whether your vote has been accepted or not. But it doesn't tell me, it doesn't tell me anything else. I could, so how do I know that wasn't the vote that was accepted was not the absentee ballot that somebody had filed with my name. In essence, I wasn't given really an answer. All I was told was that there were many confusions, there were many things that happened that, but that if I went to my voter page and I could see that my vote had been accepted then my vote was in. Um, I was not satisfied with that answer. So I continued to think of where, where else can I go? What else can I do? I went ahead and made an appointment to seek a, an appointment with my state senator. I was granted. It took a few weeks to, for me to get in, obviously very busy. And um, so I went to see my state Senator and I had forwarded to him a copy of the uh, affidavit that I had submitted. 
so that he was aware when I got there. And what I did was ask for remedy on what happened to my boat. Uh, the senator indicated to me that a, once a boat is turned in, in the state of Georgia, we have a, a privacy boat law. There is no longer any way to match the voter with the ballot. There was no, there was no way. Unfortunately, there's no way for me to find out what happened to my vote. Who's your senator? Senator John Albers. And did he show an interest in wanting to help you? I didn't feel like he wanted to pursue the issue because I believe he felt that there was no way he could help. That was disappointing to me that to under, to know that that there was no way that anyone could do anything to find out why and what happened to my vote. So did you feel violated? Well, I felt that a very precious right had been taken away from me that you know the the one person one vote didn't apply to me. It was it was diluted. It was it was gone. I I I left uh, the senator's office feeling like, well, I guess my vote didn't count. I'm almost speechless. That the right to vote and freedom in this country is so important to me as a value that when I heard your story at this meeting, I got emotional because I, I don't know what I would have done. I would have called the media right there on the spot. I would have called the police. I don't know what I would have done. And so how now, looking back on or where we are right now, knowing clearly that you are not the only one where there was fraud, that there appears to be a lot of fraud in the state of Georgia, and that you might have been a part of this scheme on some level. How does that make you feel? Um, well, I did come to, uh, it made me feel extremely disappointed, very sad, worried for what was happening, you know, about our election system, because I did learn that there were other people like myself throughout the city that happened the exact same thing, that when they presented their driver's license, they were told the same thing that I was, that they had already voted, so not that I found any comfort in knowing that I wasn't the only one. I'm actually, on the contrary, it made me feel even more alarmed that there was more people and yet there was no way of figuring out what happened, why, who did this, and, and is there any way to trace it? And it seems like the answer was, no, there isn't a way. It takes the breath out of you in a way. It was, I was very disheartened for quite a few days. So and Ursula, what do, you, what do you say to people in this country and in Georgia that say, oh, there was no fraud. You're just wasting money. Uh, you're just trying to do something and steal the election back because you didn't win. And I mean, what do you say to those people? Well, when you use those words, uh, Dr. Plasker, is it reminds me um, that those were the exact words that um, Senator Albers used when I was present in his office. He indicated to me that there was no fraud. And he made that statement. There was no fraud that President Trump had lost because of the suburban white women. And I thought, I thought it was kind of ironic that he was saying that because I am a suburban white woman. There seems to be an acceptance. Oh, yeah, well, whatever. Some of your votes are not going to count and big deal. And I thought, wait a minute. What do you mean? It matters to me. And how is it that I don't have a right to defend my own vote? What do I do? Where do I go? And, and there didn't seem to be anywhere for me to go. You know, isn't there a saying, no taxation without representation? It sounds like you weren't represented. I guess, the, as I mentioned earlier, the explanation was given that there is no way to, to match a voter with the ballot because of the privacy laws in the state of Georgia. So the privacy laws can protect fraud in this case. Yeah, I guess technically that is correct um, because, I mean, I understand the 
the reasoning that I was told there's that privacy law is because that way no one will know how a person voted and thus you don't expose yourself to retaliation because you voted a certain way or to a certain person. And I get that, I understand. But to me, it's like, okay, but I, it, it's me, it's my vote. How do I not get to prove my own vote? It's, Especially when you're told that you already voted when you know you didn't vote. Right. And especially when they tell you, well, you saw what you voted for on that ballot. I said, yes, I know I saw what was on that ballot, but I know that my, the writing or the typing wasn't what was actually read. What was actually read was a code. I don't know what's in that code. I don't know if the code is representing exactly what was actually you know, delineated, I, I don't know that. And the fact that I can't go back and prove that my vote went exactly where I wanted it to go. I don't know, it just seems to me, I don't know, it may not be necessarily the same, Dr. Plesser, but I thought I deposit money into the bank and then you tell me, I, 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 you can't tell me where it is. <laughs> I don't know, it just seems eh, not right. Wow. So if it can happen, if something like this, Ursula, could happen to you, it could happen to anybody. And the fact that there are so many questionable votes, I don't understand how there is a person alive in the United States of America that cares about democracy, freedom, the right to vote, that would not make election justice and election accuracy a priority. So moving forward, what are some of the things that you would like to see done to ensure that things like this never happen again to anybody in this country? Well, um, one of the things that I would like to see done is to remove the no reason uh, absentee ballot request right now in the state of Georgia. Anyone for whatever, for no reason whatsoever can request an absentee ballot. Uh, I would like to see that change so that there is actually a real reason such as medical or active uh, military service or anything of that nature that would actually require a person to need an absentee ballot. And I also would like to see that there has got to be some way that uh, as an individual, I can prove my own vote and that it went where I wanted it to go. It seems that that would be a very, I don't know how technically that could be done. I don't know the changes that would need to happen. I understand there are some states that have the ability for the voter to go back and, and, and be able to see what they voted for, um, but currently we cannot. And to me, that just leaves a lot of, with everything else that's going on, it leaves a very giant gap in trust. The system's working as it should. Yes. And so to me, I know to you, this is really important. That's why we were at the same meeting, by the way, because Correct. this is important to the both of us. And there are lawsuits obviously happening all over the place. And you know, who knows whether or not we can trust the judicial system anymore. And that's also a scary thought. So uh, I don't know about you, but because this is important to me, and I'm sure it's important to you, we will do anything and everything that we can to ensure election accuracy, election integrity, election justice, so that this country for my children, my grandchildren, is the United States of America and not the United Socialist States of America or the divided states, socialist states of America. I mean, that's very, very, very important to me. We talk a lot about health and longevity and expressing your full potential for a lifetime. And if there's no integrity in the system that you are voting for and that you're standing for, then it's really hard to achieve that potential. So closing thoughts as we wind down for anybody listening that may be questioning you or questioning what's going on, what would you tell them to do? Wow. I, I, I have, that has happened to me where I, I tell something and people look at me kind of suspicious as if maybe I had done something incorrectly. 
Does that make you furious? <laughs> because I'm telling you, I mean, I met you. I looked you in the eye. I saw there was a guy that stood up. He was standing in front of you at this meeting and he went ahead of you when you thought you were being pointed to. And I think you were being pointed to to speak and he didn't see you because he was in front of you. I saw the look in your eye like I am not going to let this happen to me again. The eye of the tiger, so to speak. So what do you say to those people? Just tell them, look, if you want to, like an ostrich, put your head under the sand and pretend like none of this happened because that makes you feel better or it some of your concerns, then I'm sorry. I'm sorry that you don't. But those that know me, uh, that know um, my integrity and that I wouldn't put on a signed affidavit lies, then I'm, you know, you have a long way to go. And I'm sorry that you feel that you can't you don't believe what actually did happen. You know, there was one explanation. I did watch the uh, hearing uh, that happened on uh, December 30th, I believe. It was the long hearing where Senator Beach was in there and, and Susie Boyles got to give her testimony. Attorney General Chris Carr or someone representing um, the Secretary of State's office gave a testimony to the effect that that if there were some people that requested absentee ballots that uh, mistakenly may have checked the box that indicates, please put me on a list so I can receive absentee ballots all the time. And that, it, however, when I I did request an absentee ballot for the primary early in the year of 2020 because we had no idea whether we were ever going to be able to be in person. I never received that absentee ballot. Um, and I submitted my request via email. I scanned the document and I sent, sent the email to the, as it was indicated on the envelope. And I went and pulled up that document I did not check any box. I didn't check any box that said, I want you to put me on a list. So you basically went back to double check yourself to make sure that you didn't make any mistakes. Correct. Who knows? That may have been true for some people. Uh, I, I don't know. I, I don't know. I just know that in my personal case, uh, that was not the case. Well, I could tell you that as a bystander watching who I don't know now, I don't know if my vote counted or not. I'm in Cobb County. And I can't imagine our county changing to be a blue county versus a red county based on the type of people that are here, the number of uh, churches, gun owners, gun shops. I mean, everything that is typically red. And then we've it's always been red. I can't even imagine that this county flipped. But knowing that there was, in this case, and in many, 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 many other cases, the possibility of fraud. There is nobody anywhere that should argue, especially if they feel like their vote was counted, that should have the right to discount your vote or potentially my vote or anybody else's vote. And they have to be audited. Every single vote must count every person, one vote per person, period, accurately. And so with that, uh, Ursula, you will, will be in my prayers, your family. Uh, we will fight together on a lot of these issues, I have a feeling. And uh, I'm really proud of you for standing up and telling your story, because honestly, with something like this, we have to win. We cannot not win. We have to win. I agree. It should matter. To It should matter that it doesn't matter who or how many, if if. You already have a question on whether your vote was, accept was accepted and processed properly or not. There should be a way for one to ease that concern. Yes, indeed. Well, uh, Ursula, you're courageous. Uh, glad to call you a new friend. Look forward to working with you as time goes on. And for everybody listening, in the world of 100-year lifestyle, where we talk about people functioning at their highest level for a lifetime, living a life of integrity, living well, living healthy, prosperous, contributing to the world with all of your heart and soul and talents. There aren't too many things that are as important 
as this concept of the integrity of the right to vote, having your vote count. So with that, Ursula, great meeting you, great chatting with you, and thank you everybody for being a part of this podcast interview with myself, with Ursula, and everybody, listen, get involved. Make sure your vote counts, push it, don't accept the, oh, you're wrong and you're, don't be a whiner or whatever. The other side will always want to make you feel bad for standing up for what you believe in. Do not accept, reject those feelings, those, the pushiness of that side, reject it completely, stand up for what you believe in. Thanks for watching everybody. Thanks for listening. And we'll see you next time. Thank you so much for joining us on the 100 Year Lifestyle Podcast. We hope you enjoyed this episode. If you have topics that you want us to cover, people you want us to interview, maybe you have some stories that you want to share, stories of yourself, loved ones, people in your life, we would love to hear from you and share your story. Please email us at my100 at 100yearlifestyle.com. And remember, nobody wants to get to 100 or even 50, 60, or 70 for that matter crippled, broke, and alone. So please share the 100 Year Lifestyle, all of our podcasts, social media pages, website with your family, friends, and coworkers so they can take this journey with you. And until next time, adjust your lifestyle, live your best life today and every day on the road to a sensational century. Dr. Plasker, signing off.